So now that we've spent some time thinking about net capital outflows as a connector between the market for loanable funds and the market for foreign exchange currency, and we really discussed uh, kind of where there's a trade deficit and a trade surplus and what that looks like in this relationship. And so if you think about it, I think that the easiest way to consider this on the net capital outflow is from the perspective of the foreign resident, right? So as our domestic interest rate is higher, that makes our assets more attractive, right? There's a higher rate of return on on our assets, on, on domestic American assets. And so what would happen there? Well, you're gonna have kind of a higher, right? Kind of the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents would be highly incentivized. And so when we're thinking about this, I think it's easiest to think about the net capital outflow in terms of the foreign residences, in terms of kind of uh, the foreign exchange as we think about it. And that's really what connects it down here to the real exchange rate. So we talked about how this really kind of the, the market for loanable funds sets the real interest rate in the economy. Given that real interest rate, we have a we have a certain amount of net capital outflow, which would give us the supply of dollars in the foreign exchange market, right? That's the net capital outflow there that we have. And then we said that there is some sort of demand here. We know that net capital outflow equals net exports. It has to, right? We've talked about how this is the goods and services that are being purchased or traded, and that the that, that must be equalized by the financial assets, right? By the assets or the currency that is being traded in that uh, in that uh, kind of in that trade itself. And so what is this demand here? Well, we've really got the demand here that, that is the net, right? Kind of the net exports uh, here as we've thought about it. And so what is kind of why do we have, or I guess a better question to ask here is what's actually going on with this real exchange rate or kind of what 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 is this graph telling us? And so here we know that at where they equal each other would be the real exchange rate that we would have. And we mark that by this E uh, with kind of a, with a asterisk there. What I want to think through is what's going on here as we move towards the, right, if, if this were to move up, let's say we were to have some sort of uh, shift in the supply to the left, right? And that's going to increase the real interest rate. We would be right here. That's going to move us to a higher interest rate here. And then we would have a supply that would shift. And in fact, we'll go through and kind of work through what that would look like. But what, what would that do? Well, that would bring us up to a higher real exchange rate. And that higher real exchange rate is saying, well, we can purchase more of a foreign currency given one unit of our currency. Right, that's kind of what we've thought about with exchange rate. What does it tell us? It's how much of a foreign currency we can purchase with one unit of our domestic currency. And so as this increases, right, as we kind of move up this scale on the real exchange rate, that's where we're talking about appreciation, right? Appreci appreciation. This is where our currency is appreciating. And you might also hear another term, if we're talking just specifically about the United States, you'll also hear kind of another term that gets used as the as the real exchange rate increases. And here we, we talk about strong, right? We talk about a strong dollar. Or sometimes you'll hear uh, the, the terminology strong dollar uh, sometimes you'll hear the terminology like a strong dollar policy. So things that we might be doing in this market or in, or over here with net capital outflows to incentivize net capital outflows that would then be resulting in a in an appreciation of our currency that the United States dollar could purchase more uh, more of a foreign uh, currency. And so that's one way to think about it. What's the other side of this? Well, if the exchange rate, if the real exchange rate is decreasing, right, if it's kind of as we're moving down this vertical scale, that's where we're getting to depreciation. Uh, depreciation. Having a hard time spelling this here today. And what would that depreciation also be sometimes dis described as? Well, sometimes you'll hear that described as a weak dollar or a weak dollar policy and kind of I don't know another way to think about this right as, as we're kind of coming down this direction this is where we would be talking about more exports right what is a weak dollar policy going to do well it's going to incentivize more exports right it's going to incentivize kind of this this trade surplus It's going to incentivize more exports here 
And why would we, right, as this, as the, as our dollar uh, t depreciates, why would we demand more quantity of dollars in the market? Well, again, from the kind of from the, uh, if you think about it from the perspective of foreign residents, what are we doing with more exports? Uh, because, right, what would what would be needed? We would need more dollars would be demanded in the foreign currency exchange market because we would be trying because they would be trying to finance those exports right what is actually happening if we're exporting goods that means that uh, that means that there's going to be increased demand for those dollars in the foreign exchange market so that they can purchase right those uh, those exports as well so we typically think about depreciation as kind of as as leading towards export growth uh, and I'll put growth here, export growth, right? And we typically generally think about appreciation as leading towards import growth as well, or maybe a better way of thinking instead of import growth, that it might lead towards a decrease in exports, right? So it might be kind of a, uh, a decrease in exports as well. So I just put these here as well because you'll also hear this terminology kind of interchangeably in the news and uh, throughout macroeconomics as we're talking about real exchange rates. And I just want to kind of uh, accompany that with what would actually be going on here with shifts that we might be thinking about that would increase or decrease the real exchange rate uh, in a market. And so just the final thing to kind of focus in on then is that we've got two different equilibriums. And uh, up here, what are we looking at? Well, this equilibrium here, this is the equilibrium that we have for the real interest rate. And that real interest rate, right, kind of in the market for loanable funds, the real interest rate is determined by the price level of goods and services in the present Right, relative to the price level of goods in the goods and services in the future. What is that interest rate? Right, it's well. If you're going to borrow money, it's so that you can use it for productive purposes in future years. Right, and if you if you are supplying those funds, it's it's because you think that you right you you want to return on that investment. And so we think about this as really kind of the market, or as we th we think about this as being determined by the price of goods and services in the present relative to the future. And here, what are we actually seeing down here in the market for foreign exchange, uh, foreign currency exchange? Well, this, right, this equilibrium point that we see down here, this equilibrium point for the uh, for the real exchange rate is determined by the price of domestic uh, is is, de is determined by the price of domestic goods and services relative to foreign, right, the foreign price of goods and services. And so you can see kind of how these are com or how these are connected as well. I'm just trying to give you kind of a few different ways to think about the same thing here. Uh, you don't have to think about them all in, in these different ways. I think one of these uh, ways will work, but I just want to give you a few extra ways to think about what it is that we're actually talking about when we talk about this equilibrium point or this equilibrium point and how they're connected here through net capital outflows and net exports.